Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, work on our assembly right now. Uh, we are going to be assembling all of our pieces into a finished puzzle cube. So it'll look like this right here. Now, assembling the puzzle cube is a little bit more difficult than it looks. You can't just simply slide pieces together. Um, when I click on my pan right here and move the puzzle cube, the puzzle cube moves as a finished object. That way um, you can make sure that all the pieces are actually attached in Inventor. If I didn't have them attached, when I pull this, some of the pieces would be left behind, just like in a real puzzle cube. Now you'll notice that I have all my pieces open down here. I have all five pieces that I've made in order to assemble my puzzle cube. I like to keep them open while I'm assembling because if I ever have any problems with this, let's say I made uh, a piece the wrong dimension, I can just open it up right then and there, um, change the dimension or correct the dimension, and then fix it, uh, and it'll come through when I'm assembling my block. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to go to New uh, and Assembly because we are now assembling things, and you can see it says Assembly 1. I am going to put in my first puzzle piece. So I'm going to click place right there. And I want to find my puzzle pieces folder, which for me is finished puzzle cube IED. Uh, I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to start with my orange piece right there. So I'm going to click open. Now you'll notice there's just sort of a big ghost orange piece right there. Uh, and I am going to click and then right click. Okay, and you can see my piece is now in there. Uh, I can zoom out and zoom in just like I normally do. Now the first step that I do that I find easy is left, uh, right click, excuse me, click free rotate, and I want to adjust this pretty much how I have my block situated in front of me. That's one thing that you can't see right now. Um, my block is, my actual wooden block that I created, is directly in front of me. Uh, that way I can see how all my pieces go. And I can now rotate this uh, universally to make sure that everything is totally good. There we go. Cool. Now, next thing that I've got to do is, let's see, I have to click on Grounded right there. So I clicked on Grounded, and you'll notice that there's a little push pin right here in this window. That means that this piece is sort of my initial piece, that it's not moving anywhere, that all my other pieces are based around it. So on my first piece, I have clicked Grounded, and that way... All my other pieces can attach to it. Now I'm going to import my next piece, which for me is going to be my green piece. So I'm going to place green and pop it in there. Uh, I am going to free rotate it just about the way that it goes into the puzzle. So the way that my puzzle actually works is this end right here slides into this opening. And now I'm going to introduce you to your new favorite tools, and that is going to be Constrain. In Constrain, there are two pieces or two solutions. There's Mate and there's Flush. Now let's check out what this does. I'm going to click Flush right there. I'm going to put this edge, or click this edge, and I'm going to click this right there. And you can see my piece just sort of jumped uh, backwards. Click Apply. Now I'm going to rotate this, and right there, you can see what this did was actually align this face and this face right there. So when I look at them, it's in a completely straight line. Okay, so you're with me so far. Now next, I'm going to do mate. And mate is making two pieces go together. So I'm going to click this 
face right here and then rotate it and I'm going to click that face and you can see that it just sort of jumped in there and I'm going to click apply so now this piece this puzzle piece is constrained meaning that this and this are flush and it's touching it's mating right there now the next thing that I have to do is actually get it to go together and what I'm going to do there is actually inside this I can pull this piece out a little bit and now if I zoom in I'm going to touch up there and then rotate it and touch down there so this is going to be another constraint I'm going to click mate I'm going to have that and you see there's an arrow pointing up then I'm going to rotate it so that I can get in there and you'll see there's an arrow pointing down or towards me and it pops right in now click apply make sure that you make it uh, apply it every single time that you actually do this otherwise the computer will forget what you did and will stop it so now I have my green piece in there which is a very good thing uh, I now have to place a new piece and I'm going to do my blue piece just put it right over there and remember I want to use free rotate to adjust it so that it is pretty much situated the way that it goes into the puzzle my blue piece goes right next to the my green piece right here so using the constraint tool I'm going to first do flush uh, and rotate it a little so the back is flush the back is flush right there and I know you might go oh no it's not it's not right right now it's okay we'll fix it I'm going to slide this out a little bit let's see now next I am going to flush it here and here you can see that goes straight now a lot of times with the whole constraint tool you wind up messing around with it you have to play um, click undo quite often or correct it uh, and then let's see I'm gonna flush it here here and now that piece is in place and click apply now after that I've got let's see my magenta piece that I'm going to place in there okay so let me get this situated like my block is in front of me that I know you can't see uh, I'm going to move this and then I'm going to free rotate it the way that it actually sort of goes in there there we go so now this piece goes in there and I am going to do this let's see do a universal rotate constrain I'm going to hit let's see mate hit the bottom right here and rotate it around then I'm going to mate it with the bottom right there click apply zoom in make sure that it's good so it's pretty well in there and then I'm going to flush there and there now we're not quite correct yet if I rotate this around you can see that there's a gap so I need to do a third mate or third flush excuse me flush flush 
flush. And when you hear that little thunk, that's telling you that the constraint actually happened. Rotate this around, and you can see that that piece is now in there. Okay, so I only have one piece left to go, and that is my brown piece. So I'll place it on in there. <clears throat> and now, much like we did before, it's time to actually get it to fit in. So I'm going to do some free rotate. And there we go. It's pretty well the way that it goes in. So I'm going to constrain. I'm going to flush it first. That and that. Okay. Uh, click apply. Then I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to do flush again. Okay, click apply, so now it's almost there. All I have to do is now mate the surfaces. Mate, rotate, mate, and it pops on in, and click apply. Now you want to rotate this, make sure all your pieces are together. Then once you're done, do the hand test and actually pan this to make sure that no pieces are actually loose one way or the other. When you're all done, you're going to save as you're going to save as your finished cube and that will do it. On our next video, we're going to do what's called an exploded drawing, which is where we take it apart and sort of give like assembly instructions for it. So this is a really complicated video, and I know that. So you're going to want to stop this video, rewind, and replay as many times as you need in order to get the concept.